Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. Welcome again to this segment of the Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard, your host tonight. Well, guess what? Uh, East is just around the corner. And, you know, I always tell you to bring sort of a special event of some sort and whatever. Well, we've got some exciting things happening this time around uh, from an old employee, well, let's say an employer or an associative of mine at Metro, so to speak. I've been out there doing the solid waste stuff. But, but anyway, uh, Metro is always doing all sorts of things over there, good things for that matter. And uh, I thought this would be a good interview this time around. They're doing some interesting things, getting out to the, to the public, uh, the taxpayers, if you will and uh, involving a number of fun things, especially with kids, uh, kids with disabilities, uh, just all sorts of good things. Well, uh, so joining me at this, for the first 15 minutes or so, we're going to be talking with, uh, with a representative from Metro. His name is Lupin. And, uh, right? I mean, yep, did I do it right, it. Lupin? Okay, Lupin. That's the D. Snyder, right? Yep. Okay, Lupin. I did it right. Hard name all the way I mean, around, yeah. All the way around, <laughs> did all good. Around, all <laughs> around. So what she's going to do, she's going to talk a little bit about what is Metro doing in, in that arena and and what are they what planning on doing and, mm -hmm. and this special event that's coming up right now with this egg hunt aspect of it. So why don't we just go with this? And let's, so let's, why don't you tell us about a little bit about Metro and what they do? Sure. Um, well, as you know, Metro is yes. the regional government, and we uh, are a good regional resource for a lot of things. As you mentioned, solid waste, recycling, education, um, operate the Oregon Zoo, Portland Five, um, do a lot of transportation planning. And I work for the department that, you know, I'm lucky to work yes. for the Parks and Nature Department. So we do a lot of work with the um, 17,000 acres that we actually mm -hmm. manage for the public. Um, mm -hmm. Parks, developed parks like Oxbow, um, Blue Lake Park, uh, Smith and Bybee Lakes, Glendevere Trail. Mm -hmm. Those are probably the most popular ones or most yeah. famous, but we also have a lot of natural areas all around the region in the three counties, 17,000 acres worth mm -hmm. actually. So mm -hmm. my whole job as a volunteer coordinator is to just get people out, to engage people in the places that we find um, are pretty special in our area. It was good. In fact, last year I participated in your fishing derby yes, you did. for some of the kids. Yeah. I thought that was really great. Yeah. You know what I mean? Wow. And so now uh, let's tell me more about this, well, this event, this egg hunt aspect of it. Yeah. How, one, how'd you get there? How'd you get yeah. into that kind of thing? Well, and you mentioned um, some work that we've been doing. What I came on to do with Metro specifically is to really reach out to communities that have mm -hmm. historically been really underserved and really not um, known about either the natural resources or had the resources to go visit them or right. understand what their parks can provide. And so we've been working with a lot of different groups and um, something that came out of working with uh, people with disabilities, kids in particular. We've been doing a lot of looking both with the city and the other park providers about how we can make our playgrounds specifically more accessible and more inclusive to mm -hmm. all kinds of kids. And we met a wonderful little girl named Maddie, an uh, eight-year-old Maddie. girl. And uh, her and her family told us, as we've gotten to know them, um, we learned a lot about our play structures, but we also learned a lot about other resources that don't really meet their needs or include her. She's a pretty adventurous little girl. She mm -hmm. uh, plays basketball. She's hmm. on some really? track teams. She's really? done, she does a lot of um, special Olympic sports. She's pretty amazing. Huh. Um, and she just wanted to have an egg hunt. She started talking about how uh, there's not very many places she can go she does use a wheelchair and she doesn't want something too easy she hmm. wants it to be a <laughs> little <laughs> right, more right, challenging wow, yeah. so yeah i'm actually with her and her family we devised a an all abilities egg hunt that will be happening uh, next saturday actually hmm. um the 26th at 1 p.m okay. at blue lake park blue in lake. fairview okay. yeah and we have if anybody's been there we have a lot of trails and paths that are paved and quite accessible um but it's been fun scheming what we're mm -hmm. going to do so the whole idea is that anybody who has children who have disabilities or who are not really able to participate in a lot of the mainstream egg hunts okay. are welcome. And oh. we have anything from autism to um, visually impaired to kids in wheelchairs and hopefully, you know, all a lot more. We don't know who's going to come. Well, it's the first that, year that. we've done it. Wow. Um, but Maddie and her family are definitely coming okay. and have helped scout out the area. And we've come up with some creative ways to include all okay. those kids. Um, I was going to show you. Yeah, sure. Yeah, what do you got? Props for you. But. And while we're still doing this, give them a number. How do we access this yeah, program? You got a number? You got a I phone do. number or something? I have both right, a we'll put this down there website. Can you, can you get that? 
You and guys then got that? Also, the, on the back is the okay. phone number. The phone number goes directly to me, so if you have questions, um, okay. How about 503 813 7505? 503 813 7505. And then we've got, um, let's see, the it's just the, the Oregon, we the Oregon, Metro Oregon website, Metro. so it's OregonMetro.gov. Okay. Okay. Um, there's a calendar, you can search for that, or you can type in egg hunt, and you'll find this along cool. with our, our cool. other egg hunts cool. that are occurring. Mm -hmm. um, and so one thing we decided, if Maddie couldn't be down on the ground picking up eggs, we would create a pole with a magnet on the mm. end, and a special golden egg that has a magnet inside. So she's able oh, to use neat. this to search oh. around and find eggs and pull, pull it up for her. Oh, um, as neat. well as having, so with the visual impairments and the different abilities they have, they have what they call, I don't know if you can hear that. That's what I'll need. The beeping egg. <laughs> we'll hide, we thought we'd just hide it in your. That's in your, neat. <laughs> yeah. So, just, so then we turn it on and it beeps every oh, 20 beep seconds. Automatic? Right now I'm just. Oh, you get that? And then you hide those around, and then it beeps every 20 seconds in hopes, and they'll neat. use use their so hopefully hide. So we're just hoping to, and we have lots of ideas coming in from kids and parents alike. Yeah. So it'll be yeah. a, it'll be good. And we, this is part of the work that has been really mm -hmm. crucial for us at Metro, mm -hmm. um, since the 2013 levy, um, Parks and Nature levy that mm -hmm. voters supported really a piece of that was to bring in a lot more of the community that hasn't been served well. And my job is fun because mm -hmm. I get to connect with community mm -hmm. members and find out what they want and what's mm -hmm. missing and how we can really make nature you know available and mm -hmm. inclusive for them so that part of the wish to fish thing you mentioned mm -hmm. was yeah. a, a fishing yeah. derby for that same right. purpose right. both right. disabilities but also right. at-risk youth and people that don't get a chance to do those those recreational activities that we all and love. especially those kinds of kids you know what I mean exactly. they, they need to get out of the house I mean that, that's why it was so exciting that when I was in, I participated in that particular event, you know, I mean, it's, you could tell the kids were just elated. I mean, they just really liked the idea of getting out. And it was exciting. And we had so many great anglers that were there yeah. that had been fishing in Blue Lake oh, forever. <laughs> and all the fish. So it and was the a, fish were biting. It, well, they oh, were. Yeah, they we, were biting. We you know, putting the worms on and exactly. things and whatever. So now, as far as it, again, like they can gather wheelchairs, right? Mm -hmm. will, you, will, you, will you be providing wheelchairs? or they're, you know, they it's whoever, whatever, However they're they coming call, in, they're, they're okay. welcome. Yeah, we have parking for, for them, and then usually they'll come with their family or friends, and we're okay. hoping that that okay. will we'll okay. figure okay. out how this year. Yeah, you know, that's yeah. a tough one, and that's okay. one thing that yeah. it's it's hard to get to some of these places if you're if there's not. But most of them will come with people that they're right, right, right. That they're living with. But, yeah, it's... Um, Is TriMet involved, maybe? In, in they don't have a route that goes to Blue Lake. They don't. Yeah. No. So, yeah, yeah someday that, hopefully that would that. change. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I would love it because we have a summer program happening out there this summer, too, for, um, which is also something new that we're, we're allowing free parking uh -huh. as well as free lunch. And there's activities, and it's for all kinds of kids between um, 11 and 2. We're going to be doing activities specifically for this population, too, that don't necessarily have a place to go during the mornings yeah, in the summer. Good, good. Again, I want to mention the, the fact this is Saturday, March the 26th, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. And you said rain or shine. Yes. Right? Yeah. So ain't no we're problem. hoping for shine, but well, we'll one take to, it off. 1 to 3 p.m., which is great. And then, like I said, they can just call Metro and ask mm -hmm. for you, right? Yep. And looping, yep. looping the Snyder. Yep. Right? That you sounds got good. It. Okay, good. And the eggs, and you got the eggs, and, and we're ready. anyone can come, family family members. How yep, many? family and siblings. What about, will, you, will there be a limit in terms of the number of kids you'll be? We'll see. Oh. <laughs> we're we're, we're going to be ready for everyone, and we'll you may hope get, for You the may best. get some response here. <laughs> I know, I love the, it. Because parents are going to want to be getting, getting their kids out, you know? Yeah, yeah, and we trust that, that those that can go to mainstream egg hunts will go there, but those that aren't usually able to find a place to be, that that's what we're okay. targeting. Okay. So we have one earlier in the day at Blue Lake called the Bunny Bonanza, which is right? the 10th year. Oh. So that one, that's, feel that's free. Huge. Everyone that's can go. Yep, yeah, right. it's at 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock. Um, same day? Same day. So oh, okay. that's the Bunny cool. Bonanza. And so that's a lot of folks do know, they know that. They know about that's that That's a part. standard. Yep, that's okay, the 10th year of that. This is I the first you. year for this one. So, I got you. Yeah. I got you. So churches and anybody can basically you can get that information out to mm -hmm. them. You know, those yep. kind of a deal. Yep. Okay, good. Well, that sounds good. That sounds good. Blue Lake, okay. And that's Blue Lake Park, right? Yep, Blue Lake Park out in Fairview. Okay. One of its big picnicking spot and one of the places that people frequent quite a bit. But again, if they don't know about it, yeah, or they live the key, in the yeah. area, yeah, yeah, yeah that's but a again, chance but to get out. But they call Metro yep. and ask for you yep. about this mm -hmm. Easter egg hunt. Okay, that's a good point. Any other thing that you think we might be able to, what about something in the future, going in the future? Yeah, we well, talked a little bit about yeah, that. Yeah, we're hoping that um, based on that Wish to Fish event that you had, where the idea is to bring, we have a large fishing dock at Blue yep. Lake that you've seen where that goes right out, and it's a really 
nice environment for teaching people how to fish. Yeah. We have a series of volunteers who um, I may have in included you in that information that are going through a training to become angler educators. And so okay. we'll have volunteers that we're hoping cool. to have fishing buddies out mm -hmm. on the site that could then work mm -hmm. with folks, bringing out youth from different schools and programs um, in Portland that haven't had this opportunity, provide gear yeah. Yeah, and that. That teach them really how good. to do that. Um, so we're hoping to keep start that up in March and then continue on through the summer. Good. Then they have a nice lunch there too. We did, yeah. For the, yeah. Uh, for the parents and, yeah. and the kids and whatever, they really enjoyed that piece. Yes. And you know, the other thing that I liked about it was the contacts because uh, the, the young man that I was uh, basically was responsible for, I had the opportunity to meet the person and I was able to call him and I gave him my business card. Oh, good. That was good. a really good deal. Yeah. It was just, a, just that just that relationship you know develop that relationship aspect it was really good yeah and we yeah, there was some youth from rosemary anderson high school there um yes she I caught a lot one. of fish that, that yes, young lady I saw and her. <laughs> she was happy and i then, saw her she had one spot there we yeah, tried to did. get over there, <laughs> and we couldn't a, get over there they just hogged it out big time it was a big good time. One. that was a good one yeah and teaming those two up because both the the disabled population and then some of the at-risk inner city youth that neither of the you know, same problem. They mm -hmm. don't have access. Different mm -hmm. reasons, but kind of the same result. So mm -hmm. a lot of what I do is to just sort of build bridges and connect people and transportation and gear and kind of hear what they want to do and, and make it happen. So well, Lupin, this is great. This is great. Maybe one more, one, one lasting announcement in terms of where to, who to call. And, yep. If they and can go to OregonMetro.gov and look at the calendar, they'll see all that information or call the volunteer information line, which will get directly to me. And that's 503-813-7505. Okay, good. I'm sure you're going to have quite an event. Good. And Thank I'll you. be there, folks. All right. Make good. sure you be there. Okay, right. fine. Well, thank you very much, and we'll okay. get back to you. Great. Thank you. We'll be right back, folks. You are watching Oregon Voters Digest. This program can be seen again on these channels on these dates and times. Tell a friend. Welcome back, folks. Again, I'm Bruce Broussard, your host here at Oregon Voters Digest. And, well, we're going to go on here. This, this particular announcement is a very, very important one. As you know, we're right into the political season. We've got some, very, we've got some major issues. Naturally, we've got, a, we've got a, a, a presidential race, and that's a very complicated one. We're not going to spend too much time on that. I mean, Cal and I, we tend to really get into that piece. But, <laughs> but we've got an announcement here today. We, we need leadership in our state here. We need leadership, and especially in the city of Portland. We got many, many issues. We got homeless issues. We got, we got, uh, well, we got crime. We got all kinds of issues here, uh, within the city, within the state, for that matter. And uh, so it's very important that uh, we get folks to respond from a leadership standpoint. And uh, Oregon Assembly of Black Affairs has been very, very much involved uh, during that particular period, it's all throughout the entire, well, for, for a number of years, when it comes to trying to 
reach out and engage, if you will, with the, with the, with the issues through trying to get people to react, if you will, to step up to the plate to get involved and et cetera. And he's, do, he's been doing this for a number of years with reference to the Organization of Black Affairs by having a conference in various locations. Primarily, he's been, been basically most of the time, has been in this particular area. And we want to appreciate that. But anyway, we got Cal. You've seen Cal here before, Cal Henry. He's got an assistant now, which I think is a good good idea. We got Anissa. <laughs> Anissa. 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 Yes, yes. We got Anissa. She's it's great with to us be today. Here. Yes, okay. And so what we're going to do, we're going to talk a little bit more about the Oregon Assembly of Black Affairs and the upcoming conference. There's all sorts of convention, the convention, call it a convention. I call it a conference because I'm always out there hobnobbing with the troops out there trying to figure out what to do. But, but, this, but anyway, we're going to have a convention. So let's, let's start off, uh, Cal. Why don't, you, why don't you talk a little bit more about the, uh, about the convention, and then we'll get Anissa involved in the, in the process, too. All right. You can introduce her and kind of let us know what the, how her involvement is. Well, the convention name is the Oregon Black Political Convention for 2016. Okay. And this convention is there to bring uh, candidates and community people together to be able to look at the issues that are facing and confronting black people in the state of Oregon. Mm -hmm. uh, we have two, uh, a two-pong purpose. One is to discuss uh, planks and and resolutions mm -hmm. and uh, come to a conclusion on some of these so that we can share with the elected officials throughout the state of Oregon yes. about the issues that are confronting to blacks in the state of Oregon. We have issues dealing with uh, employment, we have issues with health care, uh, the issues dealing with uh, 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 getting people involved in the political mm -hmm. process mm -hmm. and, and we want that to happen. The other portion we do is uh, we invite uh, uh, the candidates come and speak before the convention for a short period of mm -hmm. time, and the people get in and evaluate the candidates and make some endorsement mm -hmm. of all the candidates. Mm -hmm. It's a nonpartisan convention. It's educational, and uh, it's uh, looking at the long view of uh, making sure that everybody in the state of Oregon mm -hmm. benefit from the, the work of the convention. Mm -hmm. Our mantra pretty much is, Whatever benefit Black Americans or Black Oregonians, yes. benefit all Americans yes. and benefit all yes. Oregonians. Yes. So that's the essence of that mm -hmm. convention. Okay. And it's open to the public. If people want to come, they can. We got a little flyer that we show to people that yep. at time to time. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, and it's, it's it's open to the public. Okay. Anybody can participate. Okay. Okay. You know, I was going uh, to let's go back a moment from the standpoint. I will ask you this question. Are we succeeding? I mean, I know the, uh, are you uh, are folks are folks coming to the table, if you will, as far as as far as black folks are concerned, getting folks to run for office and knowing how important it is. And you know, you hear a lot about the affirmative action stuff and this, that, and the other, because a lot of times these programs are faltering. I mean, you know, you you don't you don't know the outcome and in terms of what they're supposed to be doing. And so this is very very important. This convention is very very important. All right, what are you seeing? Are you seeing the trends? Or, I do see a trend that uh, we've been doing this for uh, yeah. about 20 times yeah, right. for convention. And we've seen more and more blacks want to pick up some issues and begin to run a little bit more. And we also see the outcome of the political parties participating a great deal more mm -hmm. than we've had them in the past. And uh, uh, the other day, the, the assembly uh, uh, researched who had fouled, and we came up with eight individuals who were fouled and running this time. Right. And they run from the state level as well as the county level and the city level. Right, right. And uh, as these individuals get more and more involved in uh, sharing uh, the goals and aspirations of the black community, we see more people involved. And, and But the bigger point of it is that we see all elected officials in the state of yes. Oregon involved. That's a very in important happening. piece. And that's see, it. we see the Democrats and Republicans want to know what is going on in this convention. And they want to know what some of the issues are of the black community in right. Oregon. Right. And so we see a lot of that happen. Good. And Good. Uh, Anisha has been working on some serious issues that we have dealing with 
Okay. Uh, Let me jump in. And what's right her in. role? Wait, wait. <laughs> what's her role? Let My me. role <laughs> with the Oregon Assembly for Black Affairs, I just took the position of vice president okay. to work with our esteemed leader here, okay. Cal Henry. And this year's political convention, the 2016 political mm -hmm. convention, as Calvin said, this is our 20th convention in mm. the state of Oregon. And the Oregon Assembly for Black Affairs has existed in Oregon yeah. since 1977. Mm -hmm. And what we find is that this is a political organization mm -hmm. that interacts directly with local, state, um, county, legislative, and national uh, elected officials mm -hmm. in promoting the interests of blacks in Oregon. Another key feature for the convention when you talk about um, do we see progress, is there progress? And the answer is yes. One of the key features of the convention is the participation of our college intern program. Mm. And we send out, we've got practically all of the co Oregon colleges and universities on board oh, is that right? supporting okay. Good. the convention okay. and <clears throat> students are invited to contact their department heads and let them know they're interested in participating and they're participating as delegates mm -hmm. that means they are voting members they are setting policy in the convention platform planks and the resolutions and endorsing candidates. As oh, okay, Calvin okay, said. okay. Now let's talk a little bit about the platform and what what are some of the some of the ideas you're going to be discussing during that particular period, that part of the convention. Any thoughts? Anything you want to share, or, or just maybe just an overview of. Uh, one one particular one that we are interested in is social justice. Social justice. Social okay. justice, access to justice, and dealing with the systemic injustices. Calvin mentioned state-sanctioned discrimination. What we find under state-sanctioned discrimination that covers the gambit of systemic mm -hmm. organizations, entities that govern the state, that make policies. And those are key issues that we're going to be tackling. Cal, you want to say anything? Come on in. No, I, I say what will come out of this convention, we, we'll put forth a draft <clears throat> platform which would have a number of issues that are being discussed before uh, at the convention. And, and we'll be coming out with that aspect of it. In terms of what we're going to present there, I think uh, Nisa gave some uh -huh. short view of that. Rather than going into any long view of that platform, we have to finalize that platform that would be the discussing document that everybody would see during, and, and, and utilize during that period of time. I, uh, after which, we'll come back and share more and more with that uh, platform on issues. Now, the issue of the 2014 platform is being shared across the country, across the state, so that all can see that. It has gone through that rigorous evaluation of the people, of the delegates who came in and discussed. Mm -hmm. uh, the thing that I would say more than anything that, that is very revealing to elected officials is that they see that the documents, the document carries forth some of the issues that were being discussed. And they seem to be, have been vetted in many ways. Mm -hmm. It's not somebody throwing something up to them. Mm -hmm. It's something that has gone through a, a, a vetting process that allow people to give their input to change whatever the document may be and make some big difference. And that makes a big difference when people can see that you have taken the time to at least evaluate what you asking the people to do. Mm -hmm. And we'll be, we'll be looking at some of these things that are going on in the city, mm -hmm. going on in the state, as well as the nation in, in that aspect. But we're going to vet those so mm -hmm. that when we do come forth and, and reveal them, people will feel comfortable in knowing that those issues have been discussed and the people have somewhat come to that conclusion mm -hmm. that they need to be presented to a high a level of in, in involvement. Well, tell me, uh, thinking about you, you mentioned about the 2014 uh, uh, con in convention, right, that you had 2015. Yeah. If I were to ask you the two top issues that were being discussed during that particular time, what what results? I mean, where where are they? Do uh, you, you, you see any any? One of the big issues that we had was dealing with the access to justice. Access to justice in well, what way? In yeah. the way that uh, 
we have asked the Supreme Court, we've asked the legislature, and we've asked the Bar Association, the Oregon Bar Association, uh, to make sure that lawyer, uh, that attorneys that are licensed by the state can provide unbiased and effective legal representation for all clients, mm -hmm. all clients in the, in, the, in the version of that point. Because a lot of times, black Oregonians have had very strong difficulties in getting effective and unbiased legal representation from attorneys that have been licensed by the Supreme Court mm. in the state of Oregon. Uh, and oftentimes people don't know that the Supreme Court has a duty to have, have some responsibility to making sure that these lawyers can provide things. And the bar is supposed to be carrying out the mission mm. of ensuring that lawyers are a available to represent the individual. And that's an ongoing issue in many regards because still a lot of individuals are not having the kind of uh, results that they think they should have or the kind of um, uh, uh, representation that should be. That was one of the biggest issues. The other was the education issue. Yeah, that's it's, always it's, it's always a big issue. A lot of our young people are going through schools and they're not necessarily being uh, given the, uh, the kind of schooling that will help them yeah. be able to get involved. And, I, and one of the biggest one of the biggest focus that we have is to get people to recognize that in order to bring change, you need to understand politics and process. And many times our individuals that are coming through uh, our schooling are not getting that, regardless of the uh, the race or complexion. And we need to make sure that it's happening to a large degree. And that's why we went to the colleges and asked them to. Uh, work with black American college students and others to look at the point of providing uh, um, uh, access to understand politics and process. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and that's a big issue, too, mm -hmm. in many aspects. You know, since you mentioned the nice, and you can just jump right in on this piece, is that, um, as you know, when you, when, you, when you say Portland Public School, one, it's the largest school district in the state of Oregon. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times it's identifiable with blacks. In the, from, from an educational standpoint, that's, that's the recognizable school when, when you say black yes. folks, got me? And, but, but there's still a high failure rate situation. Um, uh, you, you, you just go on and on and on, and we, we've talked about this subject on, on an ongoing that, basis. To me, that is critical, and you asked what was the outcome of the 2014 Oregon Black Political Convention. Right. What this convention raised was the serious issue of state-sanctioned discrimination. And you mentioned education. You heard the uh, school-to-prison pi school pipeline. Mm -hmm. That is all under a cycle of state-sanctioned discrimination mm -hmm. where children are targeted here at the entrance to education, uh, be it lack of funding for um, uh, preschool education. Mm -hmm. Then they're targeted in the school, either put in special education categories mm -hmm. or disciplinary categories, which lead to juvenile mm -hmm. uh, presentations. And that goes on to, you're now labeled, you yep. can't function, you're, mm -hmm. you're, you're not going to be successful, all you can do is be a be mm -hmm. go to jail and be a slave yeah yeah essentially yeah, yeah, yeah. and then the state sanction we're talking about access to justice and effective legal representation well you find under the system of state sanctioned discrimination attorneys the judges and everyone they're working hand in hand and an example of that of ineffective legal representation is the fact that they ask minorities black people mm -hmm. to take a plea instead of a diversion course that you mm. might offer to a Caucasian or someone who is more economically uh, enriched mm. than the poor. Mm. So that's one of, one of the serious things that has come out of this. And nationwide, you're seeing that issue tackled mm. by President Obama. Mm. It's uh, Kate Brown. I've seen her tackle some of these issues. My position is, or as far as my personal position with this issue, because it's sensitive to me, mm -hmm. I have three br black sons, and police profiling will target them at any time, at any place, under state-sanctioned discrimination. 
That's the cycle, that's the design of that systemic relationship mm -hmm. in order to capture blacks, minorities, put them in the system, the penal system, mm -hmm. and you're targeting them to make money for mm -hmm. economic gain, mm -hmm. economic disenfranchise for the minorities, the blacks, the poor, the disabled, economic gain for those people who work in those mm -hmm. situations. Mm -hmm. so, well, you know, and what comes out of that with me, and, and this is something that's always been on the table, and I was saying, well, look, look like to me they should maybe change it a bit. And I'm talking about uh, when you say gangs, automatically people relate it to black kids. You know what I mean? It's not... Well, that uh, was the design yeah, of state-sanctioned yeah. discrimination. It was to target right, right, black people, right, right. to put them in to cages like animals. And it's modern-day slavery, okay. is in effect. But what, about, effect, what about solutions? The destruction. Are you hearing anything about solutions to this issue, especially in the school system and whatever? Well, one of the key solutions, and I've got a, a champion, Roy J, and his program, the um, uh, Second Chance and the Second Chance programs, mm -hmm. those programs that advocate for people to have their records expunged. And mind you, again, with state sanctioned discrimination, and having your record expunged, you're removing that criminalization that was put on you by, based on racial bias, racial bias and discrimination. Mm -hmm. You're removing that. That criminalization that was put on you, it disenfranchised you from getting a job. Right. You can't get an education. You got this criminal charge on your record that was, instead of giving you a diversion program, instead of allowing you that second chance there, we're targeting you and criminalizing you. You can't get housing now. You can't get a job. Your children don't respect you because you can't, you can't support your family. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and, and along with that issue, it's the issue of voting in many regards. That's a big issue, too. Yeah. That's yeah, another felony. thing. If you have criminal records yeah, felony, and yeah. the expungement of those records will automatically put you back in society as a productive member of society without that. Well, should that not be part of the system? I'm just saying, you know, you, you do the crime, you go, you go and basically spend the time, if you will, right? And during that particular time, should not expungement Except, be a part of the process? So when yes. a person gets out, I mean... They, However, they, they, when you've been criminalized just because of the color of your skin, okay? Yes, you should... A lot of these people should automatically have their records expunged, particularly if they've served the time. Um, it was recently publicized that the ACLU and the uh, Attorney General Lynch, Loretta Lynch, recently made public the um, counties and the local governmental entities um, making money off of people who and putting people in jail because they can't pay a court fine. Okay? You're targeting the poor, then you're putting fines on top of fines. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's a vicious cycle to keep them disenfranchised and disempowered in the system. But, but, but Bruce, I think that issue will probably be one of the issues that we will bring well, you to will. The, of, at this convention. Because the, 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 that issue is, is having a, a large impact on blacks in Oregon. Mm -hmm. Uh, we don't have a big population, but we do have a big population in institutions. And we got a big population of people who have criminal records. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think we need to uh, see about how to get the elected officials in the state of Oregon to address that issue. And that would come up uh, in one of one of well, the discussions. You, you'll be doing that part of the discussion. Yeah, one of this the uh, platform one of the platform. Planks. Okay. Yeah. yeah. B because it... Uh, it, it is critical, and, and see, even also one of the things we hope that our that members of the black community will begin to work with individuals who are trying to help 
solve some of this problem. Mm -hmm. It would be good for a number of our individuals to work with Roy J. in his program, in the Second Chance program he got out there. But a lot of people think clean, that... Clean slate. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh -huh. yeah. But a, a lot of folks have not mm. come to realize that we need to work together to solve a lot of those problems. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they, if they realize that, they're not willing to go the other step to help it. Yeah. And, and see, one of the things that the Oregon Assembly for Black Affairs has tried to do is to be realistically uh, uh, and, and talk about these issues so that everybody know that we see both sides of the coin. Mm -hmm. Some people will think want to blame somebody or want to blame the government, but others. On the other hand, we got to ask people, what are we doing to help people understand some mm -hmm. of these issues? Now, uh, uh, and, and what are we doing to see what's going on in the schools? How are we working with the superintendent? Of, uh, uh, of the of, of, of Portland public schools, mm -hmm. as well as the, the governor now is the superintendent for the state of yes, Oregon, right, that's right. and we need to know that. Not not a lot of people are aware of that aspect mm -hmm. of, uh, and, and see sometimes just letting people know what is going on would help them raise the level of involvement in getting out there involved in the process. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the, this convention, uh, ha, uh, all the conventions that we've had in the past has been willing to help people understand that. Yeah. And the, one of the things I that said to people, one of the most successful portion of this convention has been pretty much what we did to get people to understand affirmative action and what affirmative action has done to help raise the level of involvement mm -hmm. of people in the state of Oregon. Mm -hmm. And uh, the other thing we have to be in is what is getting uh, uh, both the Democratic and the Republican Party to get uh, come a little bit more aware of of what it need to do to help uh, individuals who are black, who are identified as Republicans or as Democrats, to, to make a substantial contribution to them. Mm -hmm. This convention does a, a lot out to outreach. And uh, in many instances, uh, 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 the return has not been as successful as it should be. Mm -hmm. I, I know early in the process, the, uh, the Republican Party didn't want to work with us in, 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 in doing that. Some of the members did, but the, in the, the party itself did not operate. But in the last uh, 2014, we had a lot more Republicans there than we did years before. Mm -hmm. And we hope to have more this year and, and following. Mm -hmm. But our, 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 our effort is open. And, uh, and uh, the convention is, uh, we're spreading the word so that people in the, com in the community and in the state will understand that there's no a set number of ways uh, that people can participate uh, uh, or be limited to put in participating. We are open to everybody getting involved and in making this a success. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I will add also, too, that, and we've gotten down to the point, especially after, after the number of years that I've been spending in these issues and you've been in these issues and you too, I, that it, it's not a party line anymore. It's a nonpartisan arena. It's really nonpartisan, and uh, and too often, a lot of times people tend to be able to get off yeah. if, in fact, they identify with one party or the other. And I think we need to really get down to the point that it is a nonpartisan issue across yeah. the board. That's right. We got issues because those are our futures. Yeah. Our youth are our future, and whatever. And uh, again, I'm specifically talking to the issue of, of 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 blacks because, in fact, I think it's better than just saying minorities because, you know, yeah. you know, I think we just need to target and say, okay, fine, let's deal with that issue of that particular issue okay. because, because we got to make sure that the, the programs that are coming in are doing the job, which that's is another good. area that, um, you know, we, we tend to lack in, if you will, yeah. because people, now that we need to know what the results are yeah. and results are very, very key. And, and I know that that's, that's been one of the things that you've always been saying and, and we just keep going, going and on and going. But at the end of the day, uh, what was the result of that last that last convention? You mm -hmm. got me, mm -hmm. but you're dependent upon entities out there yeah. to do that. And uh, one are those entities participating, and they should be participating, and uh, and are those uh, elected officials across the board? Because, like I said, it it might try. We're trying to identify the the the, the folks who are black and are running for office, but it's most important for those folks, those leaders, if you will, whether it be the governors and senators and across the board. To participate in in the in the forum like a uh, convention like you're doing in those forums to have yeah. those discussions, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. To deal with the issue, Isaiah. And and one of one of the things you know we look at this uh, 
convention document, this is our booklet that comes mm -hmm. out. Uh, again, we do endorse candidates and they're sent a separate candidate list. This is a living and working document and entity uh, for the legislative bodies, for the citizens to further mm -hmm. those interests and tackle, get, reach conclusions to those interests. Let's let's mention you. Now these now these are the only ones that are running for office now that you basically found right throughout the state of Oregon. Yes. This this is it, right here. Well, uh, those are the eight uh, black uh, organizations that are running. that, that, that uh, we researched and found that had power for office. Okay, but again, now as I looked at the list, again, you know, we we I know we got black folks all over the state, but a lot of times they're sort of co concentrated here. Most of them are concentrated in the. Metro, metro area, right? You know, yes. you got you got uh, Lou Frederick. I guess he's a he's a state senator. He's he's a, he's a candidate for state senator, right? Got me. Then we got state representative <laughs> from fourteen. Now that was that Lou Frederick's old seat. No, uh, James Manning. James, James Manning's out of Eugene. He's out Eugene. Okay, that's a Eugene guy. Yeah, yeah. that's a Eugene well, guy. Roberta, the okay. next one. All right, is, good. And then uh, state representative forty-three. Mm -hmm. That's R R Roberta Philip Robbins. Now that was the old representative seat for Lou, yeah. for Lou Frederick. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. That's that's here in the metro area. Yes. Okay, in the Portland metro area. Uh, they got the county commissioner district number one, Ma Marisha Childs, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. I, think, I, I saw her at, at one of the uh, gatherings. She's a lawyer. She's an attorney. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. She's in, but again, just her first time running, right? Yes. Again, from a local standpoint, because she's mm -hmm. she's from Multnomah County. Okay, for that seat. And you got Washington County. Got Glendora Claybrooks, okay. She's running for commission seat in district number three, mm -hmm. okay. And I just happen to be one of the people that's running oh, for that's mayor. You. Yep, yep. I'm running for mayor, and then uh, there's only one black running for mayor. And again, I want to make people underwear understand that we we're at the table. That's you. <laughs> and we are we are at, we are at the table for sure. We're at the table. Then we got Portland City Council position number one, Lanita Duke. Duke. She's, she's been an active for a number of years, and mm -hmm. and she's been in KBU for quite some. She has grass grassroots news on KBU aspect of it. And she's very aware with a lot of the issues aspect of it. The need to do, and that's uh, from important city composition number one. And I think that's um, let me see. Let me see. I'm thinking about who was whose seat is it? I think that's the the only other. That's Jewel. Ju no, that's not Julie. No, Julie. Julie is the uh, oh, is, is, is the county seat. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the what's the lady's no, name? No, no. Margaret, whatever. No. But anyway, then you got Portland City Council position number four. Fred Stewart is running. Mm -hmm. He's running for city council. So my point is that uh, you got folks. They, 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 these are the folks that are running for office. And these are the folks that are going to probably be participating and and, uh, and you're inviting them all, right? We have invited them, and we will invite them again. Okay, again. good, good, good. Yeah. Yeah. See, the key thing is that uh, even we have roughly about 12 people who are elected today who are out there, but they're not up for election. Uh, we have invited them. What it's began to show over a period of time is you got more black Americans who, in Oregon who want to run for office, and they get not there. And see, mm -hmm. by exposing and letting people know that they are running, it makes a big, big difference. Mm -hmm. and, and, and the key thing that we said to them, as well as we said to all the other elected officials, we think the blacks who are in, running for office need to help their white counterparts understand the issues in our community. And that's that's the key point. They have to know the issues. If in fact you're going to run for office, you got to know you got to know what the issues are about. Yeah, no question. And, and have some some idea what a solution is. So when you when you're hobnobbing with these other folks aspect of it, a lot of these folks are responsible, if you will, for sign off for of the issues yeah. for our solutions. Fair? Yeah. And, and two, we also are holding all elected officials accountable for representing sure. the black community. That's the other side of the coin. Well, well, they get the exposure, too, yes. of yeah. being around those folks that are. And, and, and around people who are not in the elected yes. position. Yes, right, because right. Because uh, the key thing we said to them and we said to our community you're represented by the elected official whether you like it or not mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, and we should and they need to know that we will hold them accountable mm -hmm. uh, for the representation that we expect from the elected official mm -hmm. who takes the office mm -hmm. that's what that uh, uh, what the the convention and the efforts of the convention ultimately lead to is that getting us to recognize that 
all elected officials in the mm -hmm. state of Oregon mm -hmm. represent black mm -hmm. individuals, regardless where they are, mm -hmm. even if they are in Maryland or elsewhere. Right, right. They are representing us, and they're making decisions that are affecting our lives. And we need to know that. They need to know that we know that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, uh, as I was sharing with some people uh, the other day about what happened in Rosebird when the president came here, those folks would call them who didn't want the president to come down there. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about the elected official. I'm not talking about the citizen. The citizen has a, a different... But I, what I'm saying, they should be representing all of us and should have pay, been paying attention to why, how they necessarily need to represent. Well, that's why the outreach is so important. Yes. And that's why your convention is so important, if yeah. you will, to, to get that exposure aspect of it because... Uh, they, they're, just, they're just not there. Like I said, that's why I made the point about who's running for office, and most of them identified here in the Multnomah County, Portland area. Yeah. You know what one, I'm of the, one of the critical things you're talking about is exposure, and what I want to say is with the advance of uh, the Internet, World Wide Web, social medias, Instagram, tweeting, exposure to uh, each other, mm -hmm and to the world. In fact, Oregon Assembly for Black Affairs recently gained three international members from, one from Guyana, South America, Georgetown, South America, one from Lagos, Nigeria, and one out of Liberia. And these are young individuals. One is 17 years of age who mm. is a student, uh, civics, major in mm -hmm. his high school but looking and we part of the convention our platform planks deals with international foreign affairs just as all our government mm -hmm. uh, governmental entities do and it lets you know the world is watching us and this organization as i said has existed since 1977 right. and many of the blacks all of the blacks in oregon who have come who participate economically have received uh, employment benefits from the work of the organization and have been members of the organization. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we've worked and the gains that have been made here you know, are directly related to our efforts mm -hmm. and they're being watched well, I worldwide. Got, I, I got to give kudos to Cal because, you know, I, he knows how I am. I, I've been on the other side. I've been a, I'm a Republican. I'm a Lincoln Republican. And I'm right here in the mix of it all, yeah. and, and uh, I, I'm I'm. Uh, Some I, of my best of friends are Republicans. Is that, is that real? Well, welcome <laughs> aboard. Uh, you wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the Republicans. <laughs> but I am the engagement chair for the Republican Party. See, for the state of Oregon. And I feel engaged. Yeah, right here. Today. That's right. Exactly. And also, I'm the veteran coordinator for the Republican Party. There you go. There uh, for you the go. state of Oregon, not there just for go. Northeast Portland or uh, Multnomah County, whatever, yeah. for the entire yeah. state. So again, I'm, I'm going to throw it back on Cal and say, now what about the Democrats? Do, do they have an engagement chair? Uh, 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 for, oh, for, as far I'm, I'm going to throw it throw back. Them out there. And what I'm going to throw, throw it back a person? little from, from what, what are you guys before doing? Cal. Well, before Cal goes Are you, are you a D? Before Cal. Are you, are you a Democrat? Before Gal, are you a Democrat? I'm I'm an independent. Why do you want to be an independent? Why why can't you just straighten because up? Because I'm an exceptionalist American, an exceptionalist. and I okay. feel privileged. So you're to a Republican? Be. Is that what you're saying? To be. Okay. To be. <laughs> Cal, <laughs> to be. Cal, you better jump in on this conversation because you never said independent to me. You always tried to beat up on me on the Republican side, and I went out and I did some engagement, <laughs> and I, I now I, I, I've got the deal. Are you going to give me my accolades <laughs> now? But, but see, when, when, I see when, when I see results, uh, <laughs> yeah, the result is I am. That's what I'm doing. Well, no, no. I'm running for office now. See, no. but see, see the whole point of proud. Bruce, I am. I'm I know proud we, we work. Yeah, we. I'm proud we of what together. you've been doing. Because it's tough on both sides of the house. You know no, that. No, no, but but the point yeah. of it is we that got your back. Who, who's been controlling? The state. Well, I know. I know it's yeah. been Republicans and Democrats. Yeah, yeah. It's not. Now, it's independents have not. In state. Right. Independents have not had that much to do with it. But I offer this to make sure that those individuals know uh, uh, that we are concerned. One of the first uh, persons uh, that uh, the convention endorsed years ago was Vicatier. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. And Vicatier became governor, and he acknowledged the importance of this convention to him. And what did he do? What did Vic do? 
Did, did, he, did he not identify the various minorities in the state? And he put this, what did he put this well, well, he, he, What was the name of those? What was commissions. The those commissions. commissions. He, had, yes. he had black, uh, commission on black affairs. He had what it, Native Americans. He had well, women. The, and he had the Native Hispanic. Americans, yeah, and, yeah. Was there, was there. Right. But he, he, he did. A the, Republican. Well, a Republican. And, and Vic, when, uh, when, the, when, the, when the legislature did not uh, approve the commission, Mm. Uh, uh, the black commission at the time, Vicar Till promised us that he would, and he did. Mm. Wait, wait a minute. I didn't get that. Are you saying that the black commission didn't approve the convention? No. The, the, the Oregon Assembly? No, 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 no. I, I didn't say I mean, the black. I'm saying. Wait, what, do you, what do you mean? We went to the governor, we went to the legislature right. and asked them to uh, set up the Oregon Commission on Black Affairs. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. And we went through the legislature, got up to a certain point, and it got sideways, mm. uh, a stop. Okay. Mm-hmm. And we went to Governor Tia and asked him to set it up by executive order, and he did. Now, Jackie Winter was involved in that deal, too. Was, so was she, she came not? later on the point. No, but she was involved. Yeah, she was involved okay. later. Okay. Mm-hmm. But, but uh, and Dick gave her the responsibility of setting it up. But we, uh, and a and Republican. She was a Republican. Repu- she's a Republican. To date, she's still she's, she's, a, she's, she's a state go- senator right she's now. She's a state senator now. In right. Salem, where I yes, live. Right. But, but, but I'm just point, saying, but my but point is the, that. But my point to uh, making, though, is that the reason that we have we looked at both the Democrats and the Republican, and the things that when I was looking at it and I saw that we need to set up the Oregon Assembly for Black Affairs. Okay. We need a nonpartisan group. Okay. That we can get blacks responding on both sides of the right. issue. That's how it, it came. Is it happening? Yes, I think it is. There's some black uh, there's some black Republicans that are members of it. There are black Democrats that are members. And there are some independents out there. The, but the point I'm making to right you on. okay uh, the point I'm making is it's important that we recognize that we have to be everywhere. Mm-hmm. Our effort to say, look, we got to be everywhere. If you if you're a green member of, uh, of the Green Party, get there and work. Don't mm-hmm. just say you're a green member. Mm-hmm. If you're a Republican, get there and work. Don't say you're a Republican. And when you when you, look, I've gone to Dorchester, as a, yeah. as a, and I'm a Democrat. Everybody knew that I was a Democrat, but I went to Dorchester, which is a Republican convention, a mm-hmm. uh, conference. Yes. And. Uh, but I was there because those guys were making decisions that affect my life. That's correct. And I was sitting there talking to them. And as I was talking to them, I let them know that I know they were making decisions. And that made a big difference in yeah. terms of how they responded to on the issues. Mm-hmm. That's why I could go back to the legislature and talk to those individuals. But tell me something, yeah. Cal. I mean, yeah. I mean, this is good. We're having a good discussion mm-hmm. here. But tell me something. Why, why are we always using the R's and the D deal? You know, that the R's don't represent black folks are not doing anything but that these are and then we, what we just got through talking about Vic was a Republican and we wouldn't have had if you will uh, that those various commissions if it wasn't for Vic who happens to be a Republican we had Jackie Winters who was a senator and I know she worked hard to do along that again a Republican a black woman okay well, I would say I mean, this well, what's, what's the deal I don't think I think we need to kind of get into the mindset it's a nonpartisan no, no. effort like you're doing no, well, let's get let, the me, done. let me let me jump yeah, in and, and, and say here. this. Let Talk me jump me. in and say this. When elected officials are sworn into office, they are not sworn into office to say, "Okay, you're just sworn to promote and legislate the interests of your particular party." No. They are sworn into office as legislators of the entire citizen well, right, right. But, of the state. But where does the that separatism is where come the in? accountability where needs to be. But where does the be? separatism come in? I mean, we're, we're, I'm just saying, I'm, that's why I'm asking Cal. I mean, he's uh, well, been struggling for years put, trying to well, get well, this well, thing going. Well, well, the separatism has come is because people use it to control people okay. and manipulate people. Okay. See, that's what we see happening even on the national level today. And that erodes our democracy. Yeah, sir. See, you got people who, now, now, I don't want to get involved in this at this moment, but mm-hmm. you got people who, who want to feel that they were elected to be a Republican. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Uh, uh, be a, and they're up there thinking that we will not do anything that this Democratic president bring in because mm-hmm. he's not a, a Republican. And we don't like him. But that's not the representation of all Republicans. No, no, but, no but it's the ones who are making a decision. See, 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 
our, our system is set up, though, that people will elect people to represent them. You see, and that's what we have to be willing to understand. We have to understand that process. A lot of people don't understand that process. Not only blacks don't understand, but whites don't understand it either. You got people thinking that uh, that they only should be answering to just the whites' constituents or the whites' the constituent figure. You need to be only answering to us and not anybody else. Well, it's power and money. I mean, that's no, what no, no. Like. But it's but power you, and money. But you're shifting another issue. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I mean, what I'm what you you asked the question: Why did we get in this Democrat and the Republican issue? One of the things I had to tell some Democrats that you're not elected to be a Democrat who is a state right. senator. You're yeah. elected to be a representative of the people. Right. And I don't mind saying that. I put my life on the line as a military, just like, as a military guy, and just like you did. Yeah. It, it was to be such that we all would be in there yes. representing and defending the country. That's right. correct. But, right. but I wasn't defending it just for me or just for the black people. or just, I was defending it for... For well, all the people. Yeah, yeah. And, and, but, but we have to be willing to share that with somebody. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes we're not willing to share that. We close up and well, thinking we don't need to do that. But, you know, in all due respect, that's why you're doing what you're doing. That's why we're doing this yes, show. Yes. And that's why they should attend this convention that you're having I here. I agree. I think it makes a lot of sense. And I want to thank, again, want to appreciate the fact that we got some folks running for office, mm -hmm. you know, running for office. They should participate. And, and that's the other side of the coin of those folks who are elected to office, whether you're running or not running, it's a good way to talk about these issues in a, a very, in talking to solutions, yeah. right? Identifying the issues and talking to solutions. Okay, and that's what we're going to be getting and at. And we're finding the that the young people mm -hmm. on college campuses, you know, they want to participate, they want to be engaged, and this convention is giving them an opportunity. Again, it's nonpartisan. You don't have to be black yes. to attend this uh, well, convention. Yeah. It's the issue. Um, the issues are definitely the not. Issues. <laughs> the issues are definitely yeah. not. Uh, and what benefits black Oregonians benefits all, of all Oregonians. All right. okay. Well, exponentially. Well, 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 this is really great then. So who do they call real quick? I got about another tw 20 seconds here. They what call. number? Yeah, give me a number to call. 503-910-1139. That's Anissa Furkan. Okay. And what's the and what's the date of the convention? It is uh, April the 22nd, the 24th, uh, 2016. 2016. Well, I'm looking forward to the convention. I think it's really great. I mean, uh, uh, you see, you got some help now. That's really good. I like that <laughs> idea. And would, would really think, and hopefully folks will actually participate. These some, we, we got some very, we got some issues that we need to deal with that are big I time agree. right now. Very important. Okay. Not important. only the presidential race, but, you know, it's something. But thanks again for being with us. And we okay. appreciate Appreciate it. All right. Good. See you then. Okay. Hey, folks, have a good one. I'll see you next week. If not, that, happy Easter. And don't forget that about that Easter egg hunt, okay, at Metro. <laughs> Fun. <laughs>